Here now is Faith to Live By with Pastor Barber. In Psalm 113, beginning with verse 5, I read, Who is like the Lord our God, who is enthroned on high, who humbles himself to behold the things that are in heaven and in the earth? He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with princes, with the princes of his people. Terry and Tim now sing The King and I. The Bible has the answer. You have provided the questions, and we search the scriptures, God's holy word, in order to find the answers. Question number one. How do you reconcile Job chapter 1 and verse 1 with Romans chapter 3, verse 23? In Romans chapter 3, the apostle Paul writes, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But in Job chapter 1, verse 1, we read, There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job, and that man was blameless. Or the King James Version uses the word perfect. That man was blameless or perfect, upright, fearing God, and turning away from evil. I'm sure that the questioner is 
uh, especially zeroing in on that word blameless or perfect. How is it that Job is described in these terms and yet the Apostle Paul most certainly and truthfully declares, for all have sinned. First of all, let me point out that Romans chapter 3 says that in the past tense, all have sinned. Each and every one of us have sinned, but the believer in Jesus Christ has come to know God, and we have come to know him by faith. It is not by our works that these things take place that we reach a blameless state. And once again, we are also looking at Job through God's eyes. It is God's estimate of Job. Job was one who walked by faith and was pleasing before the Lord. And the Lord, when he looked at him, even as when he looks at a believer today covered in the blood of his son, Jesus Christ, blameless, perfect, without fault, even in the midst of a corrupt world. We also find in the Old Testament various other individuals who were regarded who were named specifically as blameless. I take you to Gen Genesis chapter 6 and verse 9, where we read, These are the records of the generations of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, blameless in his time. We then fast forward to Genesis chapter 17 and verse 1. Now when Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him, to Abram, and said to him, I am God Almighty, walk before me and be blameless. God does not ask of us that which is impossible, but yet here God says to Abram, he says, be blameless before me. Deuteronomy chapter 18 and verse 13, once again, the Lord says, you shall be blameless before the Lord your God. And Jesus himself in the Sermon on the Mount Matthew chapter 5 and verse 48, you are to be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. And we underscore that the means of that perfection is not our efforts, our payment, our best shot at it. It is coming to the Lord and saying, Lord, all my attempts at being pleasing to you are like filthy rags. I come and I trust by faith in what Christ has done for me, and I receive as a gift his perfection and his salvation. And so then to walk in integrity and to walk open-hearted before the Lord, that is what is being spoken of in terms of blamelessness. And our sins are washed away, and glad day that is when Christ comes to dwell within. Question number two, are we living in the last days? And I answer, oh yes. And I want to take you to four different New Testament voices, which all speak in unison. First of all, to the unknown writer who penned the book of Hebrews, chapter one, and the first two verses, God, after he spoke long ago to the fathers and the prophets and in many portions and in many ways, we read, in these last days. The writer here, even in the first century, says, in these last days, has spoken to us in his son. Then we go to the beloved disciple of Jesus, John, and John chapter 1, chap, uh, John, uh, 1 John chapter 2 and verse 18. John writes, children, it is the last hour. John does not simply say we are in the last days, but he says, children, it is the last hour. And just as you heard that Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have appeared. From this we know that it is the last hour. Then to Peter's voice, 2 Peter chapter 3 and verses 3 and 4, we read, 
Know this, first of all, that in the last days, mockers will come with their mocking, following after their own lusts, and saying, where is the promise of his coming? We hear that repeatedly. And the Apostle Paul in 2 Timothy and chapter 3 and verses 1 to 5. But realize this, that in the last days, difficult times will come. Men will be lovers of self, lovers of money, boastful, arrogant, revilers, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, unloving, irreconcilable, malicious gossips, without self-control, brutal, haters of good, treacherous, reckless, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, holding to a form of godliness, although they have denied its power. Avoid such men as these. I believe that what Paul and Peter and the writer to the Hebrews and the apostle John wrote, that these are right in the center of the center of the target describing our world today. Yes, indeed, these are the last hours. These are the last days. And we plead with men and women to be right with God, to be reconciled to God through the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you for these questions. If you have a question, send it to us. We'll be glad to use it on the Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6. Heidi now comes to sing Haven of Rest, and that is followed by Jonathan Cavist singing Something Beautiful.
strife, but he made something beautiful of my life. If there ever were dreams that were lofty and noble, they were my dreams at the start. And the hope for life's best was the hope that I harbored down deep in my heart. But my dreams turned to ashes, my castles all crumbled, my fortunes turned to loss. So I wrapped them all in the rags of my life and laid it at the cross. Something beautiful, something good, all my confusion. Faith to Live by Resources has just released this brand new Christmas CD, 13 songs of Christmas, including six scripture read portions by our musicians and others on the Faith to Live by team. We would be glad to send this new CD entitled Silent Night to you simply for you asking for it. Let me also mention that we have just sent out our brand new 2024 wall calendar, which includes scripture readings on the beautiful pictures, so scenic, so lovely. I know that you will want to have a copy in your home. We've already sent out well over 5,000 of these. If you have not received one, you will want to call or write, and we will see that one gets to you just as long as our limited supply lasts. Ask for the CD, ask for the calendar. They are yours, free and postage paid, with our compliments and our best wishes for Christmas and the year end. Our mailing address, Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6, or you may call us toll-free 1-833-367-3852, and our website, faithtoliveby.ca, also has a means of you being in touch with us and making your request known. Now we have, just before the message, Matt Bowring coming to sing, Oh, for a Thousand Tongues. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing my great Redeemer's praise, the glories of my God and King, the triumphs of His Gracious Master and my God, assist me to proclaim, to spread through all the earth abroad the honors of your name. Jesus, the name that charms our fears and bids our sorrow see. In the sinner's ears, to his life and health and peace. He breaks the power of cancelled sin, he sets the prisoner free. His blood can make the foulest clean, his blood availed for me. Jesus laid, the Lamb of God was slain. His soul was once an offering made for 
and listening to his voice, new life the dead receive. You can be saved through faith alone, be justified by grace. We are moving into the second chapter of Peter's first letter, but let me remind you of how Peter first of all sets us off. He says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to His great mercy has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Ours is a living and a confident hope. And Peter says further in that same first chapter, verses 17 and 18, if you address as father the one who impartially judges according to each one's work, conduct yourselves in fear during the time of your stay on earth. We have been born again to a living hope and there are consequences, there is a a, a result, there is a follow through that is to take place because we have been born again. Peter says, while you are on this earth, conduct yourselves in fear, knowing that you are not redeemed with perishable things like silver or gold, valuable as they may be esteemed in this world, but far more precious is the blood of God's own Son, Jesus Christ. Knowing that you were not redeemed with perishable things like silver or gold from your futile way of life, inherited from your forefathers, but with precious blood as of a lamb unblemished and spotless, the blood of Christ. Now the first three verses of the second chapter. Paul, rather Peter, is pushing these readers to hear that Christ has done a marvelous thing in our hearts and lives, and we are to respond in like manner. Even as Christ came to us with open arms, we come to him saying, Lord, I come to you. I do not come with all kinds of stipulations, I simply come and lay myself before you. Peter says, therefore, putting aside all malice and all deceit and hypocrisy and envy and all slander, that's quite a list, baggage that the believer must set aside. If we are to follow Christ Jesus, if he is indeed to be our master, this is baggage that we cannot, that we must not, that we dare not endeavor to bring along with us. Let me read that again. Peter says, therefore, building upon what he has already given to us, therefore, putting aside all malice and all deceit and hypocrisy and envy and all slander, like newborn babes. Three times as my daughters came into this world, I witnessed how that they, as newborn babes, longed for milk. Peter, he says to these people and to each and every one of us also, this is the craving, this is the desire that we are to have for the truth of God, for the word of God, he says, like newborn babies, 
long for the pure milk of the word so that by it you may grow in respect to salvation. How do we grow in respect to salvation? We come to know our Lord and Savior better and better. The one who has bought us, the one who has redeemed us, the one who has saved us from our previous selves, that we might grow. Peter, at the end of 2 Peter, he says, grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Here also, his desire is that these believers and that you and I might grow. And he says, if you have tasted the kindness of the Lord, if indeed you have come to know anything of Christ, come, having set aside that old baggage and coming to know him and to know him truly and to delight in him. Oh, do that today and rejoice in your, the great salvation of God. There's room at the cross for you. Thank you for joining Pastor Barber today. Please watch for Faith to Live By again next Sunday at this same time on this same station. Until then, Faith to Live By prays that the peace of God will fill your heart and that the joy of the Lord will be your strength. Pastor Barber would love to hear from you. The mailing address is Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6. 